From the original Razer phone up until now, there have been a ton of manufacturers now that are coming out with purpose-built gaming phones. And they're all touting that their phones are better at playing games than any of the other phones out there. But considering the fact that most of these all have similar processors, similar RAM, similar specs, etc., do we really need gaming phones? Why not just play the games on your flagship or close to flagship device instead? Is there a difference? First, this video was kindly sponsored by Trademore. Trademore is a super fast and easy way to sell your used electronics. Just head to the link below, click on sell your device, tell them a bit about it, get a prepaid shipping label to send it to them, and then get paid by PayPal or virtual MasterCard gift card. That simple. You can even buy certified used devices on Trademore that have been fully inspected so you don't have to worry about what you're getting. Click on buy a device on the site instead and check out the ton of devices they have at super discounted prices and you even get free two day shipping. So check them out at the link below to trade in your old gadgets for some extra cash to maybe buy a gaming phone or maybe not a gaming phone, depending on how this goes. So first off, let's test to see if there is any perceivable performance difference between gaming phones and non-gaming phones. Now here I have the Razer Phone 2 and the Asus ROG phone to represent the gaming phones and a OnePlus 6T, a Galaxy Note 9, a Pixel 3 XL to represent the non-gaming phones on a varying spectrum and they all have the same Snapdragon 845 processor as the gaming phones and we have an iPhone XS Max just for curiosity. So first, I'm gonna run the same benchmark on all of them and see how they do. So if you're playing a game on a phone, you're probably playing for a lot longer period of time than this benchmark runs, and that produces a lot of heat. So let's see with another benchmark that actually tests things over time. It takes the same benchmark, it runs it 30 times in a row, and it measures the uh, frame rate as that goes, right? To see if it goes down as the phone heats up. And these gaming phones tout how they have all this cooling ability and all this other stuff, so they should show up some difference, right, in this test. Now for battery, it seems that the gaming phones actually lost battery faster than the other devices in general. And when we look at the performance, that makes sense, considering it looks like they all started out a bit higher performing than the rest and managed to keep the performance a bit longer than say the iPhone and the Pixel at least. But the Samsung and the OnePlus definitely kept up. Now lastly, these are benchmarks and they push devices to their limits. Um, and they don't necessarily represent real world scenarios, right? So I decided to play the same game, in this case, the new Skyrim Blades, which is at least decently graphically intense on all of these devices for the same amount of time and see if I could really notice any difference. And you know what? I couldn't. Even from the lowest performing benchmarked Pixel all the way up to the top end gaming phones, my gaming experience was pretty much the same. Now that makes a lot of sense, right? They're all running very similar hardware. Um, the only big differences really in that are the cooling systems that they talk about and then also like software optimizations. And we know software can be a big deal when you look at that OnePlus 6T for example and why OnePlus generally always kills like speed tests on the internet, that's all software. The bigger factor in all of this though is the fact that mobile games just aren't that taxing. And think about it, if you were a game developer who made money off of people buying your game or buying things within your game, why would you wanna make a game that only people with the beefiest of systems could play? You'd wanna make the game able to run on the lowest common denominator devices so that you could increase the amount of people who could play slash generate you revenue. Now maybe one day if developers really see a market for it, we can get like console ported or just higher end games that have a system requirement that is much higher and gaming phones can then strive to make sure they pass those, etc. Kind of like what we have in the gaming laptop space, right? And then developers could charge a premium for those games and make up for the smaller user base. Now besides performance though, there are a couple of benefits to having a gaming phone. From custom accessories, controllers, dual screens, Wi-Fi 6 docks, etc., to software things like the air triggers on the Asus ROG phone and the mappable buttons on the Black Shark 2 controller that actually let you use physical buttons even if the game doesn't support them by mapping a tap on the screen in a specific place to a button. It's super clever, honestly. And then there are things like the insane display and speaker quality of the Razer Phone 2 that lets you play at 120 hertz and here in Dolby Atmos. Now the only real big downside to using a gaming phone, if all other things are considered pretty equal as far as like actually playing games, right? Is the fact that you just have to kind of live with a crappier camera, which to me is a huge deal. And I think to a lot of people out there is, and so that could be a pretty big deciding factor. And it makes sense. A lot of these higher end gaming phones are made by laptop companies who aren't really used to making software for a camera. 
I mean, when was the last time you saw a really killer looking webcam shot? There guys, hope you enjoyed that. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of the video, what you thought of the test. Uh, be constructive, please. I appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, also, if you like this video, th please thumbs up it or share it. It's greatly appreciated. Check out the rest of the channel. I've got a bunch of like battery tests and other things, and we're trying new things with like kind of like a vloggy style. I hope you guys like it. You seem to so far, but go check it out. Let me know. And subscribe if you like what you see there. As always, though, regardless, thanks for watching. Thank you.